So uh, apparently we have some Suits fans out here. Oh, super nice. excited. So nice. Um, that, excited. that promo was intense. I know that the Suits cast is very serious about not spoiling the show. No, they're terrified about getting in trouble. Like, but not, not just from our, the powers that be, but from our, our uh, creators. So season five just ended in March, and we're coming back for season six. And season five ended on quite a few notes. We have Mike, who's in prison. The firm is kind of dealing with some, some drama. So what can you tell us about what we can expect from season six? Um, so, okay, so season six, what's, what I think is kind of amazing about it is that we come back three minutes later. We just pick up right there. Um, so Mike is walking into his prison cell, and there we are um, at Pierce and Spectre Lit, and it's basically falling apart. It's a ghost town. And so we have to pick up, you know, we got to figure out how to get Mike out of prison and if there's a firm to save. So um, it's a little dramatic. Yeah. And dramatic. what's going on with Mike? How is he dealing with being in prison? I mean... It's got to be pretty crazy. <laughs> he, you know, he meets some, um, some people in there. So I think that's particularly exciting for our show. We have these amazing guest stars coming on this season, and they populate this new world that we're in part of the time, which is the prison. And um, I know Patrick is really excited because he gets to wear, like, prison attire. <laughs> So he's basically in loungewear all day. So he's pretty happy about that. No more because suits. No, no more suits for no, him. No suits. He never has to go to a fitting, really. It's great. And he shaved his head, I see. Or at least in the promo, it looks like he shaves his head. Yes, and he did reveal um, uh, that that was actually a wig that had to be kind of cut because he had already cut his hair for something else when, when that was filmed. So movie magic. Well, we movie were, hair magic. Yeah, we were talking a little bit about that backstage. Um, you know, the wardrobe on the show is incredible. But you were saying that not just hair and makeup do you have to go through, but you have to kind of do full body makeup, too. <laughs> I get, I mean, I'm not complaining because it's like a full body kind of rub down on my limbs. Um, so, you know, life is hard. Um, yeah, so my makeup artist Patrice has to use this like tinted moisturizer all over my body because I think it, you know, in one of the early seasons, it started to look like I was wearing like white tights or like a little like under t shirt, a little white under t shirt underneath these like amazing Victoria Beckham Gucci, you know, dresses that you would not underdress with t-shirts in that way. So, yeah, it didn't work for lights and all that kind of thing. So I get a lot of fake tan. I tried to spray tan once. Not so much. Go. Not so much. I mean, I'm a pale girl, too, and we need to protect our porcelain skin. So if you have to get body makeup, do it. It's better than being out in the sun, right? Yes. yes. So, and it's better than being orange. Yes. And your wardrobe for Cuba Donna. Donald Trump. <laughs> How did I Super sense that Super scared to go there. <laughs> Let's not. You can't cut it. And we can't cut this. Yeah. <laughs> it's live. It's streaming. We could say whatever we want. Donna has the best clothes ever. And I guess with the body makeup is why you kind of glisten like a model every time you walk into the firm. <laughs> Tell me about like, uh, how that feels to wear all these beautiful clothes and sort of act the part. Um, So the clothes, what, what's so amazing actually about wearing the clothes is that um, they say so much about the character. And uh, it really, for me, it kind of feels a little bit like wearing a superhero costume at times. And um, Jolie, who's our costume designer, she, she gets these incredible clothes. And I've had this amazing education about fashion and the wearable art that is fashion. But when we have each scene we look at what's happening in the scene and we choose the clothes accordingly and like how the fabric is and what the fit is and what it feels like to be in that dress. Is this like a, you know, like a power kind of moment? Is this really strong or is this vulnerable and an open neckline and a flowy skirt? What color is it? Like all those things come into play and they really, they really help you in the scene as an actor. I was saying to um, Gabriel the other day, he was, you know, he's always in these exquisite suits and I was looking at him, I was like, you basically are in a superhero costume right now. Like, I mean, you might as well have a cape on. It's pretty amazing. Because it's so fitted, too. Like, everything is made for their bodies. Everything is tailored within, like, an inch of their life. I, w I At one point, they had this Valentino dress for me. Again, life is really hard. I'm like, Valentino? So hard. Like, I'm so jealous. <laughs> and <clears throat> I was in my fitting, and they just took the seam, and they just went <laughs> with scissors. And I was like, wow, oh, it's Valentino. 
want to, you know, but they were just going to put it back all back together, but just exactly fit to me. It was really, it was, it was amazing. I mean, with a show called Suits, you got to look good. Yeah. It's like another, it's like a character in our, in our show, you know, it's really, it's as important as the sets and all that. And speaking of the characters in your show, I mean, Suits has such a beloved fan base and a following. Um, season six, it's pretty amazing. Did you know when you signed on to the show that it would be such a success? I, no, I mean, you don't know anything. I, I, you, you know, you just hope and say your prayers and, um, you know, do whatever superstitious things you can do. And by the time, you know, for a lot of us, by the time we got to doing the pilot that was Suits, we had done a lot of pilots and had had our, our hopes raised for other things and knew that it's a rough business and, you know, there's a lot of disappointment involved. So you just kind of do your best and trudge along. And I think we are all surprised and amazed and so grateful for our fans. It's the, like, you let us do this. Like, you got on the boat, and we're like, let's go, let's do this. And that's amazing. That's such a gift. And, you know, I know that I speak for the whole cast when I thank the fans for that. And um, with Donna, she's very beloved on the show. She is a spitfire. She's the most powerful, for sure. Kind of the moral compass, telling people what to do, where to be, things like that. Did you realize that as soon as you read her on the page that she was going to be this powerful character and you were just like, I need to play this role? Well, when I first read her on the page, I did see that she had a lot of heart and, um, and a great sense of humor. And I sensed that she was an empath. Um, but there was, you know, just a little bit there. But what I did know that my old friend, I did know that my old friend Gabriel Macht was going to be playing Harvey Specter. Yeah, you guys have been friends for years Since, before, since right? 90... Three. We met the summer of 93. And, um, and so I knew that there was an opportunity there for at least a really dynamic uh, boss-secretary relationship. Um, but it has certainly surpassed my wildest dreams. I had no idea where they were going to go with this. I had no idea that they were going to give the secretary so much power. <laughs> I'm drunk with it. <laughs> I love power. <laughs> And that must help that you and Gabriel had this friendship and this dynamic before. So going into the show, did you find that it was pretty natural or did you kind of have to work at this new dynamic between, like you said, boss and secretary? That's such a good question. Um, both. So it was so easy and natural and just like butter, just hanging out, playing a scene. But the problem was, and I remember, I remember very early on in season one, he had to like... I was standing in his office, and no, I was standing at Donna's desk, and he had to walk down the hall, super mad at Donna, and like go into his office and be like, you know, give it to her. And so he was like, this way, come with me. And I walk in behind him, and I go, and I hit my mark, and I turn around, and he's about to get really mad at his secretary, and he is in hysterics. <laughs> like, he just can't, he's just like, I can't. This, is, this is preposterous. This is preposterous. Like, it's, sometimes we have these moments when we're like, have to completely remember that these are other people and because it seems so silly to us to have like a boss employee kind of dynamic and it makes us laugh and there's a little bit of a sexual tension there too because you know I know they've had a past before so what was that like playing with Gabriel being like uh we're sort of attracted to each other but we're not but we're friends in real life but we're this on screen and we both were super surprised when they all of a sudden what was it like season three that there was a flashback and you were like, wait, they, what? They were together? Huh? I, w I wasn't playing it that way. Were you playing it that way? I wasn't playing that way. Um, I, think, I think what's been really interesting about being on the show and having the gift of Twitter and, and like the immediate feedback is that there's a magic thing that happens and, and I, I know in theater you experience it kind of immediately, but, um, you know, on TV, you get to get the feedback later. People put on it what they want to put on it. So we had not been playing that they had this past, and then the writers decided that they would put that in, and so suddenly we were playing that, but everybody had, not everybody, some people had imposed that idea prior. You know, you see, you see what you want to see. So oh, essentially, your fans are helping write the script. For I think Aaron. so. I think so. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Have you seen a change since season one to season six now through social media and through how your fans react online? Um, yes, I can tell you at the 
At the end of season um, four, when, uh, when Donna, in the finale, tells Harvey she loves him and that she's quitting, um, both Aaron Korsh, our creator, and I jumped on the phone the day that that was airing because we were nervous. We were both really nervous, and he was genuinely like, you think you're scared, Sarah? I'm scared, you know? And uh, so we checked in with each other throughout the night as it was airing, and there was a lot of, there was a lot of Twitter about it. And um, he, <laughs> I cannot repeat them here, um, but he received, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of zealous tweets um, and, uh, you know, appreciated it and responded where he could. I, I remember one that was like, I got a lot of all caps tweets that night. And I remember one of them was just like, just run together, all caps. It was like, fangirl down, fangirl down. <laughs> that was so awesome. That's the best. I feel like all you need to do is watch, live tweet your own show and go online and you can see right away the fan reactions. Well, I mean, it, you know what's, it's so gratifying for all of us to ha have... Um, you know, viewers who are so engaged, we're so, so fortunate to have that. It's so, so great. And when we're, you know, working at four in the morning, uh, you know, away on the set in Toronto, just knowing, knowing they're out there is, it's a really powerful motivator. And so with Harvey and Donna this season, um, what's this dynamic going to be like since the firm is going through so much? And, you know, we saw Harvey and Mike kind of have that fist fight at the end and, and how's their friendship going and is that going to affect... Harvey and Donna's relationship in any way because um, you know she is kind of his voice of reason um, there's a promo out now that where he where you tell him like you can't always be the hero um, so tell me a little bit about that and how the season will kind of unfold with your relationship with Harvey and and what he's dealing with well um, Aaron our creator has called Donna kind of this emotional glue and um, so I think what's interesting in season six is that Harvey is dealing with some really complicated emotions. Um, he feels tremendously guilty about what went down. And uh, he's not always so good at navigating the waters of his emotional life. <laughs> so um, Don is there to shepherd him through that and keep him on track because she realizes that, you know, you need, we need Harvey Specter to figure this out. So um, in terms of their dynamic, I think they are... Um, really united in their partnership um, for this cause to get Mike out of prison to save the firm. She keeps him on track and um, yeah, and they just are kind of going into battle. And I'm excited because I feel like Donna kind of rises to a new level of badassery because she's just like not having any of it. Yeah. Woohoo! More badassery from Donna. <laughs> And, of course, Donna's always there for Rachel as well. Um, and, you know, we saw with Mike and Rachel that their wedding didn't happen. Um, so on the girl side of things, what's going on there? Um, they, I mean, I think uh, it just brings them closer together. Um, Donna's there to be there for Rachel, but also to, like, again, in the same way, to just help her find some tools to get through it. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a really cool thing about Donna is that, you know, she knows when to just sort of listen and tell her friend, this sucks. <laughs> you know, I got nothing to say. This is, this is awful. But then when, when Rachel's ready, she's there for her to help her, you know, find her way. And, you know, we had Megan here a few months ago, and she was talking about how you guys are all so close offset. What are some of the things you guys do up in Toronto when you're filming? And are you sad when you guys have to stop filming for a little bit and then you get, get back together? And what are the kinds of things that you guys do? I'm so interested um, to see. Well, next weekend I'm going to um, go with my family. Patrick's uh, mom has this like cool cottage up on Georgian Bay. And um, we go up there and hang out and play board games and cook for each other. Um, game night is kind of a fun thing to do. We're just doing like regular silly stuff. Just your well, silly I saw friends, you and though. Rick, I think, right? We're at Hamilton, oh and my we God. were talking about that. That She's seen Hamilton twice, and I haven't seen it once, and I'm really upset. <laughs> right, so you were saying some of the things that we do. Rick and I did spontaneously get on an airplane to go to Hamilton two weeks ago. Um, yeah, it was his third time. It was my second time. We are 
super fangirls. <laughs> it's like crazy. We have the hats. We wear them. She was singing a little bit of it backstage, but with, you know, daily conversation in there. <laughs> well, that, that happens in the makeup trailer. We'll be in the middle of talking, and then we'll just, like, sort of throw in Hamilton lyrics here and there. It's so impressive. Patrick can do the, I'm not throwing away my shot. He can do the whole thing. I'm a graduate of King's College. Yeah. I'm, I'm oh, gonna she's going to do it. I'm not going to do it. But he should come here, and he should do it, because it's really impressive. He once sent me a video of himself doing that rap while he was driving the car in L.A. So that's what we do when we have downtime. We send each other silly videos doing, you know, Hamilton lyrics. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I remember after I saw that, I emailed Patrick, and I was like, I'm not kidding. I need, like, a support group right now. I need to talk about Hamilton. I can't get, I can't get over it. I know. I yeah. like dream about Hamilton because I enter the lottery every day and I'm like, today is my day. Anyone else feel like that? Damn it. So just waiting for my, my shot. I'm just waiting, waiting for, my for shot. your shot. Don't <laughs> throw it away. Um, when, when Rick and I went, we had the um, pleasure of meeting some of the cast afterwards. And I swear to you, I almost fell down <laughs> because Chris Jackson watches Suits. Oh my God. He's like, watched all of Suits. He was like, I watch it, you know, on my commute to work. I'm like, so, so like sometimes you're watching Suits and then you go out and you sing that song? Are you, are you singing it to me? <laughs> you're singing to me, right, Chris? That must be cool, though, when you're fans of someone who are fans of you as well. Have you ever met any other celebrity fans of Suits that have just been like, oh, my God, Donna in the flesh? I was really excited when I met Laverne Cox and she had seen, oh, seen all of it. Yeah, I want her to come, come on our show. That would be amazing. I mean, speaking of Laverne Cox, I mean, another person who has found this strong female character on television, which I feel like we're in the era of that. But Donna was kind of there before this new, you know, um, renaissance of female characters on TV. Tell me um, what it feels like to play such a strong character and to find that role that you could really sink your teeth into. You know, um, I feel so blessed. There's, there is a lot of talk right now about strong women on television, and, um, and, and we have lots of talk about diversity and all those things, and, and we need vast and diverse stories. And, um, and as I said, I really do enjoy... I so enjoy uh, Donna's power and Donna's confidence and, and all those things and her strength, but I also really care about her vulnerability, and I think what's really important on TV and what we do connect to is not just these women's strengths, but sort of their flaws, too. Because we just really want to see humans, you know. And, and I, it was super excited when Kate Blanchett won an Oscar and said, you know, clearly women's stories are not niche. Yeah. Like, we, we want these stories. So it's great. And what are the shows that you watch on your downtime, of course, because you're filming a show yourself? Is there any show right now that you're just obsessed with? Well, I've seen, I'm, I'm up to date on House of Cards, um, Orange is the New Black. Um, I loved Nurse Jackie. I'm a big, big Edie Falco fan. Um, Veep. And um, right now I'm watching Horace and Pete. Has anyone watched Horace and Pete, the Louis C.K.? Yeah. Something. Yeah, yeah. I haven't watched that yet. I love that because that I, that has sort of um, that's just a kind of a new way to watch television. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, that's what everybody says. Oh, it's a, we're changing the landscape of television and how we watch television, how we consume television, and it's true that's happening. But Horace and Pete is doing something really cool, and it feels like you're watching a play. So I think that's what theater geek likes. <laughs> <laughs> Theater geek, have you ever considered maybe doing Broadway or a play? And, and you know, coming from a background, and in, in, I know you went to college for the arts, of course, but um, would you ever consider that? Maybe be in Hamilton? Oh, you? no, not Hamilton. Oh, God, no. Oh, God, that would be a way to wreck it. <laughs> then the cost of admission would be like 50... We're giving the tickets away. <laughs> um, uh I love doing theater. Theater is my first love. So, and I trained, I trained to do the theater. So I lived in New York for 12 years and that's what I did. And, um, uh, the last play I did in New York was when my first daughter was one. And then I went and did suits, started suits. And then I was pregnant with my second child. I was six months pregnant when I did the last play that I did. And my character, the character in the play was, um, pregnant. So that was kind of intense and I did that play and then now it's just been a matter of not really having the time to do it right now but that's what I want to do you know that's what I love 
Because it's people amazing. people assume that you're in New York because Suits is based in New York, but you actually film in Toronto. Yeah. Do you find it hard to get the New York vibe up there, or does it all kind of come full circle? Oh, um, you know, we most of our stuff is on a set. I mean, we do have those locations, um, but we're we're in that set, and I think it's you know it really has a great great New York vibe there. Yeah. But Toronto is an amazing place to live. Gotta say, I love Canada. Perfect place to shoot, too. A lot of shows are shooting out there. Well, it's time for audience Q&A, so give me some questions. We're going to start with a question from an online viewer. So May says, what is your favorite Donna quote? Ooh. I'm not apologizing for who I am. Yep, solid. She didn't say it seriously like that. But, <laughs> but I think it's a cool mantra. The second that I saw that on the page, I was like, that's Donna's, like, we need to, I need a bumper sticker. <laughs> bumper stickers. Bumper stickers. Right here. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Okay, so Donna's basically a badass, which means you're a badass. <laughs> um, so my question is, if you, Sarah, had to choose to work for either Harvey or Lewis, which one would you choose? Oh. Um, me? I would, I would be awful at it. Like, I would be fired immediately. I could not, I could not handle it. It would, um, I have no skill set, and it would really, the, it would really stress me out. I'm really conflict-averse. Um, I'm, I'm really different from Donna in all those ways. <clears throat> I will say this, I will say, so in season six, um, Donna's not working for Lewis. And um, I think that's a much healthier dynamic for Donna and Lewis, then they can get back to being kind of best friends and, um, and he can get back to sort of treating her really well. Um, and they can get back to having a lot of fun, which is something I'm really excited about in season six. So um, I got to say, Harvey, Harvey, but I want to hang out with Lewis. <laughs> Plus her, your relationship with Gabriel is probably, you know, it's like working for your friend. <laughs> Hello. Harvey has more money. <laughs> Hello, thanks for being here. I'm a big fan. Um, some of the characters has, a, has their dark secrets revealed throughout the show. Do you think you, you should have a dark secret? Ooh, Ooh dark secrets, yes. <laughs> I mean, why not? Yes. What kind? what kind? What kind of dark secret do you think I should have? I don't know. Uh, being married or secret child, I don't know. Ooh. Oh. Secret yeah, child with Harvey? That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. I think I think Donna could have been married in the past. She has made references to being proposed to a number of times. Um, look, I think a secret, yeah, secrets are always good. Secrets are always good. I, when I was in drama school, Meryl Streep came to talk to our class. Okay, another moment that I almost fell down. Um, and she says that with her characters, she, she said this at the time, this was a long time ago, but that she always has a secret. So somebody said, so what was it in Kramer versus Kramer? And she said, uh, she never loved him. And, and it was, you know, I mean, it was cool. I went back and watched it again to like, see, like, could I tell? It was really cool. She didn't cool. love him there. She didn't love She him. was not loving him. That was not, she kind of loved him there. Well, let's hope the writers are listening to us, because we need some deep, dark secrets for Suits. Well, look, when they revealed that, I, as I said, when they revealed that Donna and Harvey had, you know. Yeah, that was a surprise. But it was a surprise. He's like, that's not a secret. <laughs> True fan right there. All right, we have time for one more. Hi, Sarah. Hi. I love this dress. It's beyond gorgeous on you. Thank and you. I wanted to know, because we talked about wardrobe, um, do you find that because you wear this amazing clothing on set, does it influence your everyday choices? A million. <laughs> it is so awful. <laughs> because you can't go back. It's like these clothes that we get to wear on set, and then I go to, like, you know, the carpool line, I'm definitely not in that Valentino. Um, and it's funny, sometimes you meet people like out in the world and they're kind of like, oh, <laughs> you wear yoga pants? Hmm. Yeah. Are, they, are they Gucci? Um, it definitely influences me in that I have a, a, a real appreciation for fashion. I can say that for sure. Well, we can't wait to see all the fashion Donna will wear this season, including yoga pants. There's nothing wrong with yoga pants. Thank you so much for being here. And guys, watch season six of premieres July 13th, I think. July 13th. Thanks, Thank you.